Welcome to Hoobie's Garage, the dumbest automotive channel in all of YouTube, and I'm feeling a bit in pain now, but also a bit blue, a bit depressed, because I have become the YouTuber, the car collector that I did not want to become. And there are a lot of reasons for me coming to this revelation, which are unfolded in today's video, where I am back in Italy, but also because of the previous video, which is the craziest, most amazing thing I've ever done, and it's my least watched video in six months. But that part's fine. But let's go back to Italy, and we'll tour some collections, and then we'll talk about why I am so mad at myself for being in this place. Welcome to Hoobie's Garage, the dumbest automotive channel in all of YouTube. I am in Servia, Italy, and you saw the earlier video with me comparing the new SL to the classic. An amazing experience, but that was only two days. The first half of the journey, they sent me in this beautiful 123 Mercedes 230 CE, and you're probably wondering why I'm wearing shorts and showing my chicken legs, and well, it's kind of a throwback to my beginning with the brand. The first car I ever bought with my own money was a 123 300D Mercedes that I bought on eBay for 2,500 bucks. Flew out, sight unseen, drove it home, and it didn't have air conditioning. I was wearing pants, I was sweating my you know what off, and actually one time I stopped at the gas station to get ice cream. It had melted by the time I'd gotten back in the car, and so I just tried to throw it out the window, and all the ice cream came back into me, and I was just drenched in it for the rest of the trip. It was quite disgusting. So when we arrived in the Mercedes-Benz Classic Center, gave me this beautiful 230C 123 coupe. It was like, well, coming home. I've owned probably over 20 of these and uh, six at one time. There was a very crazy period where I couldn't stop buying 123 chassis Mercedes. Uh, uh, I noticed it didn't have air conditioning and, well, I was certainly prepared. The wife, uh, maybe not so much. So today I'm going to give you a tour of this beautiful 123 230 CE coupe. We're also going to stop by the Lamborghini and Ferrari museums to check out well, what they have inside. And then we're actually going to fly home. This will be all over. It's just like a pinch myself kind of moment, but it'll all be over. And then we're going to check on my own fleet that's sort of becoming a museum piece in itself. My cars, some of them are appreciating so much that I really am scared to drive them and they're just parked like these cars in the beautiful museums. But first, let me give you a tour of this incredible Survivor 230 CE. This is pretty incredible right now. They're warming up all the 300 SLs to go to the start grid for day two. I certainly need to thank the Mercedes-Benz Classic Center for inviting me out and letting me have cars for every single day, including today. Be sure to follow them on social media, the Mercedes-Benz Museum. We're gonna check out some museums today, but they're not even close to the Mercedes-Benz Museum in Stuttgart. It's the most beautiful car museum I have ever been to. If you're gonna go to one, that would be the one to go to, but we're gonna cheat and check out a few others today. But let's look at this 230CE, if I can get away from these 300 SLs for a minute. Getting a little louder in here, but this is from the 123 chassis from 1977 to 1985. It's really probably Mercedes' best car ever made in terms of reliability, durability. They're just fantastic machines and they are quite gorgeous, very classic lines. Everybody's revving, garbage can going. Uh, right place to film, Tyler. But you see inside you have the velour interior, which comes in handy for the lack of air conditioning. So this is kind of a poverty spec car. You see crank windows, no air conditioning, no tachometer, just a clock in there. The classic steering wheel, you see a decent sized back seat. So this is back when Mercedes wasn't too concerned with uh, technology other than being the safest, best built cars. They just wanted really, really good quality. And that's how they were able to market and sell these things. You can buy the best car in the world. And, really this was at the time. And you see under the hood, well, it's the base model four-cylinder engine, which I have never experienced before. They never sold the 230CE in the United States. We had all the diesels, the Ds, Es for Einspritz, so you have a gasoline-powered vehicle. Look at this crazy setup here. Looks like a Stromberg carburetor with vacuum lines coming out of it, which in the 1980s, that's pretty old-school stuff. These 1950s Mercedes have direct injection. So really the base model, but it has been very, very fun to drive around. But now let's take it for a spin. We're gonna tag along with the SLs and then we're gonna hit a few museums today. Holy moly. Well, it's not hard to lose the SLs. Those things are really stinking fast. So we have to make our own way uh, with the maps. But this 123, <laughs> it's just perfect for this. You know, 100 horsepower, I do kind of miss having the extra power, but 
you know, it fits right in where you can have a lot of fun at not a high rate of speed. And you're in a modern enough car that you're comfortable, even though it doesn't have air conditioning. I feel pretty safe in this thing. It's a really solid driving car, and that's why I love the 123 so much. I've owned maybe 20 of these because it's one of the few cars that gets better as it gets older. It doesn't seem to have all the age-related issues that cars, as they age, get. They're just too simple and robust to die for any reason. As this car is proving, knock on wood. Now we've been sticking with the rally so far, but now we're gonna veer off and kind of make our own way. Since I'm not part of it officially in this car, I can do my own thing and we can go and check out some museums, some competition, I guess, to Mercedes, no, no offense. When we're in the neighborhood, we gotta stop by Modena and Bologna, uh, butchering the pronunciation, to see the Lamborghini and Ferrari factories and museums. So let's go. Alpina B3S Turbo. Wow. And then a 458 convertible because well, there it is. How do you do museum tour YouTube videos? Hot. You just walk, I guess. There's one car, there's, I guess this one got stolen and stripped, huh? Enzo's desk. So he'd be sitting at that desk when he told Ford to go F themselves. Oh, another stripped one. 812 super fast? And that's the 812 that we can afford. Yeah. Oh. Oh. All right. 40, 50, or Enzo. I'm a 50 man. Wowza. But then you're not buying the car, you're buying the engine. At least that's what they say, right? Oh. Enzo. And La Ferrari. Let's just cover it all. Huh? Which one would you pick? The 4050 or Enzo? Or the La Ferrari? That's the $200,000 battery replacement one. It's the hybrid. You know what? When you buy this car, you don't care about money. It's neat that they show the engines because they're just as proud of what they're building there as well as the cars. Kind of unique in that sense. That's what the steering wheels are supposed to look like. It says, do not touch. I did not touch. You. <laughs> and here's the thing that I have no idea what it is. It's a P80C. Oh. Okay. So which Grand Prix winner best describes your mood right now? Uh, Phil Hill. <laughs> Look, he looks sad. Because I'm hot. Oh. I'm sitting in the car. For over two hours now no. with no air conditioning. But this though, I'm Schumacher. Like, yes, yeah. Schumacher. <laughs> so that's that's it. That's it? That's it. Oh. That was that was twenty bucks or each forty dollars for was, it's over. I was hoping that we see where they assemble it. Don't we? Yeah. Well I gotta say the Ferrari Museum is kind of a letdown. Uh, what's more interesting is what's around it, including this uh, Ferrari rental where you can rent them by the minute or the hour or the lap, but uh, it's probably the only place in the world where you can actually get an F-355 <laughs> as a rental. They actually trust these things to uh, drive around reliably. So anyway, hopefully the Lamborghini Museum is a little better. Oh. Periscopo Countach. Oh yeah. Not oh. the interior. It's, it's really Oh, it's cool. Mira SV Espada. Whoa. Yes. Lamborghini SUV LM002 in Saudi Arabia, Dubai Gold. This one looks like it's just sitting brand new. How many miles on it? 
Yeah. Just 1,200 kilometers. <laughs> Holy moly. And the Espadas, just look at the gauges and switches on this thing. Wild. 13,000 kilometers on this one. <gasps> oh my god. I like the angels. Oh, wow. <gasps> we're greeted with a 25th Countach. No wing. Holy moly. 6,900 kilometers. Nice. I found my car. Which one? I like that combo. Oh. Colors. Diablo 6.0. No more pop up headlights. And then mock up for the new Countach, which has come back. This is so cool. <laughs> but it's time to go home. Are you ready? No. Me neither. So I'm a little down in the dumps coming back from that trip knowing I will never do anything that amazing ever again. Driving around on 123 is cool enough, but doing it in a new SL63 and then a 300 SL and comparing the two in a video around Italy driving as fast as I want, that opportunity will come never ever again. And uh, to have the video not perform well is depressing. Having any video not do well is really a bummer, but it's sort of my own fault. I had pigeonholed myself into this theme right here where I stand in my garage, I talk about the latest car, I purchased the latest car that broke, go to the wizard, spend some money there, go to Van Gogh, clean up the car there, maybe every once in a while do something small, but that's only to the result of me being back in the garage, complaining about the car breaking, taking it to the wizard, doing that over and over again, and it gets results. I really am happy with where I'm at in that sense, to where I have a very loyal, fantastic audience that I absolutely love that enables me to buy all these incredible cars. But at the same time, it's turned me into the person that I didn't want to be. I've turned into the car collector who just parks the things and then looks at them and doesn't use them and uses the money that he gets to just acquire more things to just stare at and look at and feel good in that sense. I really wanted to use these cars. I haven't tracked the 66 Mustang once since I bought it. I wanted to become a vintage race car driver and be Paul Newman and Steve McQueen in that Mustang and I haven't done it once yet because I've been the hamster on the wheel making other videos to, well, make a living and buy more hoopties that I don't need. And if I were to do a video where I track the Mustang versus say the new Mustang, I'm sure I'll do it because I want to do it and I'll really enjoy doing it, but the video won't do all that well. Any kind of stunt, anything I've done the last couple of years, I get punished from YouTube. So I have a little bit of a quandary here. Do I keep doing what I'm doing over and over again, like a hamster on the wheel, like so many other YouTubers, two videos a week, Wednesday or Friday, mostly without fail, keep going and going to increasingly diminished returns slower growth until, well, the next thing comes up or where I fade off into the sunset? Or do I do what I want to do, bring a camera along and just use be damned, money be damned, just have fun doing it? And the answer is, <laughs> well, I don't know. I'm scared, honestly. I want to do things that you all want to watch and I want to do things that will do well, but also I want to do something other than standing in my garage, buying the latest hoopty, going to the wizard and all that stuff. As fun as it is, there's definitely more to car ownership than that. Experiencing these cars, doing things with these cars, like what I did in the 300 SL, uh, that needs to happen more. And speaking of the 300 SL, that absolutely cannot be my last big experience in that car. I've told myself that I would never ever buy a car for a million dollars, two million dollars. It just makes absolutely no sense. That car being my absolute dream car, end all be all, I will never ever buy. And why do I tell myself that? Because I'm being practical and I like quantity over quality? It's dumb. Maybe it's dumb to go buy it, but it's also dumb to think that I can't buy my dream car. So I'm going to. It's not gonna be tomorrow, but I'm gonna start selling off a lot of these cars to make it possible. And it's not gonna be a dramatic change on the channel. This may be kind of a post-trip slump, the summer slump with views, which is pretty common with YouTube and me just being, you know, a little edgy from all of it, uh, but, I am gonna change things a little bit. And I really appreciate you all watching and being with me through this journey. And well, if you haven't checked out the last video because the algorithm pushed it down, because the click-through rate was low and the average watch time was low because it was something different, well, please give it a watch. And thank you, thank you as always so much for watching. I'm not selling you, I'm not selling you 